Hello, 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 everyone, and welcome to another episode of Safe Space Podcast. Thank you for the overwhelming response of our last podcast. I'm Vijihari, and today we have a very special guest joining us. July is celebrated worldwide as the Disability Pride Month, and hence we are here to discuss about the disability inclusion in the workplace. Shanmati Sendhil is a passionate mental health professional with a mission to foster inclusivity and advancement within both societal and organizational contexts. With a robust background spanning six years in NGO and in private practice, she has refined her skills as a compassionate mental health professional and DEI specialist. Throughout her journey, Shanmati has been committed to breaking barriers and promoting accessibility in social and professional spaces. Her efforts are aimed at creating a positive impact, not only within organizational landscapes, but also in broader societal frameworks. As a disabled woman, Shanmati strives to visibilize and normalize the lives of people with disabilities. She is dedicated to challenging stereotypes and combating ableism. Working hard to remove the obstacles that hinder access for disabled individuals, her efforts reflect a deep and unwavering commitment to advancing inclusivity and equality for all. Our conversation today is particularly relevant for individuals and champions who are striving to create inclusive, equitable workplaces. Shanmati, thank you so much for joining us today and welcome to the podcast. Thank you for such a warm welcome, Vijay. And I think uh, there is no better way to affirm my disability pride month other than this podcast. So uh, thank you. I'm delighted to be a part of the Safe Space podcast. And our, our pleasure to have you, Shanmati. So with that, let's get started with our first question. So can you share us with a quick introduction about your background, your journey, your family, schooling, work, and your passion? Absolutely. I would first like to start with stating my identity. I am a physically disabled woman, and I have a locomotor disability, so I use a wheelchair. And to start and talk about my journey, I think I have to let out a little secret. It wasn't until 2020 or 2021, I got comfortable with the word disability or being disabled. Being a disability advocate now, someone who uh, is working towards accessible mental health, it took me around 25, 26 years to be comfortable with the term because of all the uh, negative connotations and conditioning around it. Right? So, I grew up in Chennai all my life, and I I am from a family of three. It's me and my parents. And early 2000s, growing up in Chennai, uh, accessibility wasn't something that was even in the vocabulary at that time. I went to a metric school. And uh, to start with my experience of schooling in itself, uh, uh, all the classrooms were on top levels. And while my school was considerate of giving me a classroom on the first or second floor, I still had to be taken by my parents, carried by my parents in many of these spaces. And this was my schooling for almost 12 years. And all of these spaces, the one thing that uh, kept recurring was a feeling of isolation and alienation because uh, The moment I reach school and before I leave, the gap is when a lot of things happen. I have classes, I have co-curriculars happening, I have labs happening, which needed a lot more moving. And because I was someone who had a locomotor disability, I had to miss a lot of things. And that is when I started feeling as if uh, this place wasn't something that was designed for me. But I did see my peers who were able to get away with it or able to enjoy all the aspects of school life as easily as they can, which made me wonder if something was wrong with me or if I didn't fit into the place that I've been put in. And this continued for a longer time until I went to my university uh, where I 
fortunately got a chance to meet more people like me who had similar lived experiences and that's when i thought hey they have felt what i felt too so it's not that i don't fit into this place but the place isn't accommodative of what i need and the place isn't something that is allowing me to cherish or allowing me to thrive uh, as much as i want to and as much as i can and that is when more conversations on these lived experiences came up and i also realized that all of it uh, is being silenced or is going invisible because we haven't seen much of movies about it we haven't read more about it in our curriculums as well and that is when with the space that i got through the communities with my peers i was able to collect all the stories and see what i can work with and being a counseling psychologist i was able to streamline it into mental health practice to begin with i was able to uh, become a disability specialist uh, involve more people with disability who wanted mental health support uh making it accessible through online and offline support a more affordable prices then partnering with a few ngos as well who would do the same or connect with a broader spectrum talking more about it sharing more stories and now at this space i am here trying to uh, vis- visibilize it more making more people aware of our lives in this wonderful wonderful i think uh, rightly said uh, shamati when you said uh, using the word disability uh, being having lived with it for 25 26 years i think while i was reading out your and having worked with you so closely uh, i've never actually felt uh, that you were uh, someone with disability but when i was doing this intro today i must have had that thing i think it's very important to normalize the usage of the word and not to relate it with any negativity and i think more such conversations are very important and what you're doing in your space is something that's brilliant kudos to you and more power to you uh, what are your uh, passion uh, and uh, some of the challenges uh, also that i think we'll probably come to the challenges but i'd like to hear on your passion uh, and what are your hobbies that you do so i would say my passion is right now to definitely be as loud as i can about my identity and uh, bring more people into my journey and our journey of being a disabled person especially a disabled woman uh, from a specific intersectionality right and uh, while of course there are shared experiences there are mo- there is a need to talk more about our experiences it is also important to understand the uniqueness of each of our experience so right now my passion is to work more on uh, accumulating those stories and being more loud and vibrant about it and also to normalize other aspects of disability i i'm sure in many of our, uh, our media or exposure we have seen disability to be uh, disabled people to be someone who are achievers who are passionate about uh, things who are able to uh, leverage all the uh, contacts all the networks that they have to achieve to a place but i also want to show the other side they can have fun they can do they can enjoy an adventure they can go on trips and these are true stories as well they can they can excel at workplace not only as a, cha- a di champion or as someone who is uh, technically sound but also as someone who is uh, who is multicultural as someone who is as engaging and as fun as they can do so that is also an exciting passion that i'm trying to work towards lovely, lovely. thank you thank you for that uh you also touched upon the word intersectionality as a person with disability and being a woman uh so what are the challenges that you have faced uh and the biggest challenges that organization also uh face when it comes to implementing effective disability inclusion strategies um mm-hmm. from your perspective as well as from the organization perspective and especially uh as an intersectional person what specifically that you have faced as a woman mm-hmm. right so when we talk about uh, challenges for a disabled person 
we often tend to focus on the very evident, very glaring inaccessibility that is present everywhere, how the society structures are ableist and uh, the physical infrastructures that aren't as accommodative for uh, people with disability. However, what often goes unnoticed or un unseen is the fact that the basic challenge that has to be addressed comes with the mindset. Uh, all along, even as I was talking about it earlier, the negative connotation that comes with the word disability or being disabled. I, I don't think uh, until the last 10 years, people even use the word disability. They were uh, specially abled is a term that came up. Uh, challenged is a term that came up. But uh, calling a person as they are is in itself was considered a boon. And uh, when people are not aware or sometimes not ready to step out of their comfort zone and acknowledge, OK, this is how things would have to be addressed. Or disabled people are existing, and their needs are uh, something that we'd have to start focusing on. Accessibility wouldn't come. Like people, uh, I have seen a lot of uh, my neighbors, a lot of my teachers who would come and show their pity to my parents because I was disabled. Right? So when it is going to be pity, the pity will get reinforced into something uh, very limiting. They would say, OK, you're disabled, which would mean you would have to stay at home. You would have to be here. You would not be able to do a lot of things. Uh, you lack the ability to do a certain thing. So when it when it is reinforced as a lack of something or stereotyped as something that is an inability, People often tend to neglect the fact that these has to be challenged in order for us to become accessible and inclusive. Like for example, uh, we can talk about accessibility. I'm sure many organizations are talking about accessibility for disabled people. Uh, and accessibility, when not uh, done mindfully, can definitely be even more challenging. Uh, there have been many uh, organizations that I had wanted to consult to. And I uh, deliberately called them and asked them for access. I asked if you have lifts, if you have ramps, if you have these uh, uh, white spaces for my wheelchair. And they say, yes, please come. Then I go there and I see two steps before the lift. right? And that is not accessibility. right? So when people become aware, when people are mindfully understanding and willing to change their prejudices or biases that we all carry. We all come from the same background, at least uh, even experience, if our experiences are different, there are going to be similar ideologies we carry. And if we don't intend to unlearn or uh, try to challenge our own mindset, accessibility wouldn't be completely functional or optimal. So I would say it starts with the mindset. And I think uh, many organizations, as they are trying to become accessible, uh, they either focus on physical infrastructure or trying to immediately uh, hire uh, people with disability without having facilities in place, without having uh, training and awareness in place. And that becomes challenging in terms of retaining people with disability as well, because it would cause more mental health and physical impact for people who are who have been hired as well. So, uh, so when mindset and accessibility is taken care of, there is going to be less in discrimination. There is going to be uh, a diverse culture at the workplace. So I think these two are the major things uh, that organizations and disabled individuals often do. Yeah, lovely. I think very well said. I think the uh, infrastructure, uh, the physical barriers, the technological barriers, uh, these might involve some cost. Okay, but the attitudinal barrier, I think uh, that actually does not involve any cost. But that is the major uh, barrier that we are seeing that has to be overcome. And when that is overcome, then the others actually is very easy to implement. Right. So uh, beautifully said, uh, Shandari. Yeah. So uh, having uh, heard about the barriers, uh, so what would be your tip 
फॉर दी एच professionals, प्रोफेशनल डी आई चैम्पियंस हु आर लिसनिंग टू आर पॉडकास्ट टूडे वो सम प्रैक्टिकल स्टेप्स दैट दे कैन टेक टू मेक देर वर्क प्लेस इज मोर इंक्लूसिव फॉर एम्प्लॉज विद डिसबिलिटीज while there are definitely challenges that we have spoken about earlier there are organizations both white collar and blue collar organizations who have intentionally made changes intentionally uh, taken up measures to include disability inclusion in their workplace culture as well right and one of the uh, first ways to start it is through an accessibility audit Uh, or an audit for inclusion right and trying to uh, get through the information about your own organization is going to give you more insights about what you have to do. um seeing where where are the gaps identifying uh, roles that you would like to give uh, people with disability uh, seeing what are some of the diverse populations that you are trying to include so all of these insights are going to help in uh, slowly starting to develop clearer policies and clearer processes for including uh, people with disabilities and people of any marginalities as well so it is important that uh, uh, starting with an audit uh, and slowly using the insights from the audit to make clearer policies many at times people do say they have inclusion policies they have an anti discrimination policy but what does anti discrimination ma- mean for people with disability a person could come up to a person with disability and say hey i don't imagine you could do this or if you can do this i can also do it you have been such a motivation for me right while these are again can be seen as something that is motivational and something that is inspiring a lot of times these also indicate the fact that hey i don't think a disabled person can do this so it's important to define what discrimination would mean in terms of each population that you are trying to include it is important to talk about what processes you are trying to uh, include in in your policies as well with clear definitions which would give you more clarity and direction to take over the next steps of inclusion more seamlessly and we have spoken about hiring and uh in many cases and even with hiring spaces we talk about using neutral inclusive languages but uh, more often we tend to use phrases those aren't really inclusive for example in the job that i wanted to apply for it said we want a person who's always on their feet right and so they wanted a fast paced person uh, they wanted someone who's on top of things but somehow that word made me hesitate to apply to that space so while you are saying that you are open to hire people with disability see what language you are using and trying to use inclusive language and actually applying these languages on a day to day basis is what is going to make it more than uh, just a paperwork right and uh, as we spoke about uh, trading and the uh, lack of awareness as well training and inclusion is also a very important aspect so with the insights that a person the organization has gotten from their audit intentionally building training and awareness sessions to build accountability and to include uh, all the employees in the process is one way of uh, moving towards championing in disability inclusion as well when it when it's audits and constant conversation and awareness i think even one time awareness is just a part of tokenism that's definitely not going to help mm-hmm. but constant conversations uh, resource groups the specific resource group groups on a disability i think these are some of the things definitely will help i think lovely examples that you quoted are there any more uh, such examples where people unintentionally or unknowingly have said like the, the words that you said on the seat or uh, you are so inspiring despite your disability so any other such um, uh, casual compliments or something that you think was not appropriate based on your experience 
I I think uh, all people with disability would definitely would have uh, encountered many such compliments or motivation from uh, individuals they meet on a day to day basis. I have had uh, strangers coming and telling me by just looking at me that I was brave because I showed up in a uh, in a social place, right? And there were there also been spaces where. Uh, I have been frowned upon when people get to know that I enjoy uh, social connection. I enjoy going. Uh, there, there have been uh, my colleagues in many of the spaces that I've worked before who said, "But why do you go out? Isn't that uh, a difficult thing for the people around you to ensure access, to make sure that you are safe? Aren't you?" somehow by having your own needs, wants, and wishes, burdening them is also one way of showing concern. So according to them, it is concern because it is difficult. What they again don't see is the lack of access that is making it difficult in many of these ways. So being called brave for showing up, uh, being called an inspiration for uh, breaking barriers which are unnecessary in some space. I do remember being carried to an office which was on the first floor because uh, there was no lift and the lift wasn't working at that day. And because I was there and they called me uh, someone who was so committed and who was so uh, uh, inspiring and so dedicated to their work, but at that point, I was disappointed at them because they couldn't arrange a different meeting. Right. So these are some of the examples that are there. And as you said, definitely uh, conversations, continuous conversations are important. While uh, ERGs, employee resource groups are prevalent, it is also important that non-disabled employees are also included in that. Right. Uh, having uh, resource groups for just disabled employees is not may not always be uh, helpful for the people around them who wouldn't know the student, who wouldn't yeah. know what they could do to make people belong. And mm -hmm. there was this uh, very nice uh, phrase that I usually go by, which says, Disabil diversity is a fact, but inclusion is an act. Right? So you can have uh, as many people as you want on papers, on numbers, but to make them feel included and to make them feel belong is through your intention and through your impact. So I think that is something that we all should uh, be holding on to. Yeah, lovely. So I think uh, on, on that note, I think I remember uh, uh, the, our earlier guest had also said that I think if organizations truly want to make their places accessible, maybe the leadership team or the DEI champion should actually uh, go around their entire office and spend their entire office on a wheelchair for the whole day. And only then they will know whether their each and every office space is uh, accessible for people uh, with locomotor mm -hmm. disability. And mm -hmm. also another um, uh, often uh, 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 said fact that, uh, that I keep hearing from uh, HR leaders and DEI champions is that um, hey, Vijay, we would like to uh, uh, have uh, people with uh, disability. Uh, we are completely infrastructure uh, friendly. Uh, something that is something very common. And there are other set of people who say that uh, no, no, Vijay, we don't want to hire people with disability because mm -hmm. we're not an infrastructure ready. Mm -hmm. People always associate disability with only locomotive disability. There mm -hmm. are other forms of disability like uh, people hard of hearing, uh, speech impairment. Uh, so these don't need those physical uh, infrastructures uh, per se, right? Uh, so the, the, the thought process should go beyond that. I think it's very important to have more such conversations. And on that note, um, what would be your advice for individuals with disabilities on what skills they need to equip themselves to shine in the corporate world? Uh, because uh, there is a lot of uh, hesitation as well because I also being in the space I keep getting requests on my LinkedIn uh, from IIT grads saying that hey I'm looking for a job I have disability uh, is there any opportunity that are, are available so I keep wanting someone from IIT and not being hired yet right 
Uh, so what would be your advice on that, Shanti? So uh, before I go into what would be the advice for people with disability, I'd just like to add one more uh, point in terms of uh, the organizational perspective. Right. Uh, I would like to go back to one of my examples of how I didn't feel uh, I felt isolated and I didn't feel belonged in my school because it felt like that wasn't something that was built for me or that wasn't something that was built by having people like me in my in their mind. Right. So when we are talking about inclusive hiring as well, it is also important for us to uh, be mindful of what a person who thinks the world may not be a place for this world or this way that world has been working might not have enough accommodation for them what would make them feel belonged with this job posting that i've uh, posted right apart from putting it on an uh, on an expert uh, platform or apart from putting it on a uh, network that would reach to people with disability what word or what phrase can I add to ensure that people know, hey, this is a place I can confidently uh, apply to and they would look at my profile and they would not ignore it because of my disability. That is a thought that I would like uh, to put in for all the, uh, when organizations are considering inclusive hiring. Meanwhile, with uh, people with disability, I would say, Right now, we all have access to internet, at least even if limited. To some extent, we are able to connect uh, socially or uh, digitally with people uh, like us. So there are disability networks that are available where there are pro bono courses, there are pro bono mental health support. There is also skill development classes that are specially devised for people with disability in terms of industry specific uh, trainings that are there uh, soft skill trainings that are there language trainings that are there so it is important that we slowly start connecting to these communities and networks to know what is available for us and by, by leveraging these networks we'll be able to ensure that we we can take up space and we can ask for what is needed for us. And in many spaces, uh, we do see organizations talking about wanting to uh, be inclusive, but they are open to asking what they we need as well. So it is slowly important to start gaining that space and saying, hey, I would like this happen for me. If you are going to hire me or if you are going to take me, these are the needs that I'm going to have. And uh, any inclusive organization is going to have this. So it is OK to advocate for yourself. It is uh, OK to ask for the skills that you need support with. And once these uh, networks are leveraged well, you would be able to access these industry-specific soft skill-based skill development trainings. Along with that, there are many organizations who do provide uh, sponsorships, apprenticeships for people with disability. So online networking is a great way to build yourself accordingly, to build yourself for the corporate world, for any passion of yours in that space. And take up space, it's OK. Ask for it, fight for it, it's OK. And uh, it is it is our responsibility at this point, along with our allies to keep holding that space for us. Lovely, lovely. I know we are at the end, but last question, I don't want to let go of you. Uh, or you are also a mental health practitioner for specifically for people with disability. So what has been your experience or any uh, tips and advices that you would share based on that for individuals or families or for organizations? Uh, so. People with disability, uh, when they reach out for mental health support, it is often, again, in terms of isolation or uh, wanting to be heard or wanting to uh, build themselves or build resilience for the ableism around them. And in many spaces, uh, I have come to understand that what they needed 
is to be heard, to not be infantilized, and to be heard in many of these spaces, to be listened to, to be understood and acknowledged. And many, uh, e even in my experience, as I've gone to uh, even interviews where as a guest, as a speaker, I've seen spe people surpassing me and talking to my parents like, uh, I am someone who may not be able to communicate for myself. So in many of these spaces, these do uh, cause a lot of impact and one's uh, self-efficacy, how they see themselves, and in turn, affecting their confidence, affecting their trust in their abilities while they are optimally functioning individuals. So uh, for individuals with disability, of course, it is important to keep acknowledging that the world is slowly opening up to be accessible, opening up to be affirming for us. And there are supportive spaces and support networks for us to uh, continue sharing our experiences, continue leveraging these networks. Uh, for friends and allies who are with us all these while, be with us while we talk about our struggles and uh, be with us, uh, talk for us or uh, communicate for us in all different ways that you could to uh, constantly combat the ableism that is coming around us. And for organizations to foster the culture of open conversation. Right? And uh, open conversations in the sense, bring in experts, it's OK. Even if bringing in experts is a difficult aspect, your employees with disabilities can share their experiences, can share their own, uh, own combat through their life. And many a times, it's not just uh, one challenging situation. It is a series of daily life uh, uh, struggles that come across. So listening to them and trying to hold space for that is the best way in any capacity to be affirming of a disabled person is what i would say so uh, thank you thank you so much uh Shanmati, for joining us today uh lovely insights and oh, thank you for opening up on your personal experiences i'm sure for people who are listening this has been very very valuable so thank you again uh, to all our listeners. Thank you for tuning in today's episode of Safe Space Podcast. If you enjoyed this conversation, please subscribe to our podcast and share it with your network. And if you are interested to be our guest, do write to me, Vijay at tradesecurus.com. Until next time, stay committed to creating inclusive and equitable workplaces. Have a great evening. Bye. Bye.